So, rawr. Um, in other words, hello. <laughs> so, uh, I got introduced to the Manchester tax scene through the Science Festival. So, the Science Festival is an annual event and it happens generally in the kind of October half term and it's mainly around the university and the science museum there so I kind of grew up attending the science um, museum and attending all of the different science festivals and at the science festival I was introduced to an organisation called the Manchester Girl Geeks so they were um, running a workshop, I think the workshop was a Morse code workshop so you um, got a bit of cardboard and some tin foil and it was connected to a buzzer and they taught you about Morse code and you got to build something that would um, help you learn about Morse code. And then there was another workshop which was about bristle bots. So you got a toothbrush, some paint and you attached a motor and you could create like little robots. Um, and I really enjoyed their kind of events at the science festival and I found out that they do um, dinners and tea parties where they invite um, loads of people to come along and you do something a little bit geeky whilst having some tea and cake. And one of their workshops was an introduction to Code Academy. So for those of you that don't know, Code Academy is basically a website where you can go and you can teach yourself how to code. And I thought this was really interesting. I think it was the first time I'd actually been introduced to what coding and what programming was. And I found it really, really cool that you could use code to basically create your own programs and get computers to do what you wanted them to do. Um, so, from the tech community, I learned about a thing called Arduinos. So, um, somebody, I went to an event run by Alan O'Donoghue, which was called Hack to the Future. So, there was loads of young people like me really interested in learning more about programming, learning more about technology. And um, somebody told me about an Arduino, which many of you have probably used. And I think my mum tweeted about it, and someone was very kind enough to um, actually send me a starter Arduino kit, because we weren't too sure about whether to invest in one or not. And so I put it into my year eight homework of building a volcano. So my dad helped me wire up, I think, um, about eight LEDs and an LCD screen. So the LCD screen would light up telling you what part of the volcano was by looking at the corresponding LED. So that was kind of like my first make a project. Um, and then around about the same time, the Raspberry Pi came out. And I don't, this video is not going to work. Um, but the very first Raspberry Jam was in Manchester. So somebody called Ben Nuttall, he kind of, he was running those jams. And there was loads and loads of really interesting people there. And they helped to introduce me to and help me set up my first Raspberry Pi. Dan Hett helped me a lot on the kind of first day, helping me to set up. <laughs> set up um, my Raspberry Pi and there was loads of really interesting projects um, going on. So one thing was that um, Ben had gone to this thing called a code retreat which was kind of like a programming day where you do, it was themed around Conway's Game of Life so you just did Conway's Game of Life in lots of different ways and it's kind of to help you improve your coding skills I guess or just kind of relax whilst doing some programming and he introduced me to this problem and initially he helped me to create a version where it just using Python it printed out um, a smiley face if that cell was alive for those of you who aren't familiar with the problem in Conway's game of life it's a cellular simulator I think so basically there's a grid and in that grid you there's two states so there's alive or dead and there's four rules that it follows so if you have less than two neighbours that are alive, then you die because it's underpopulation. If there's two or three, then you stay alive because it's a nice balance. If there's more than three, then you die as if by population, but if you're by overpopulation. And if the, you're a dead cell, but you've got exactly three neighbours, then you become alive again, like you're being born. So this can create some quite pretty patterns, which you would have seen if the video was working, but YouTube doesn't want to work. Um, so, um, actually here, I think I did an Arduino workshop in this town hall um, and that kind of helped me to get to grips with it a little bit more and the first iteration of actually like using LEDs and using a matrix. So I got, instead of having it print out to the command line, I had it lighting up some, a little grid. Um, 
and then kind of moved on to putting it onto the Raspberry Pi. And there was lots of different people, I think Aaron and Adrian and people, they really helped me to kind of learn more about how you could um, get this hardware to interface with your code. And instead of just having something print out, actually having something that would um, work in the kind of the real world, um, something physical, so kind of introduced to the physical side of computing. So I scaled it up and um, I made a bigger one. So this one's using, I think it's the the LOL hat or something, PyLite, um, based on the LOL shield for Arduino. Um, so it was a bigger one. So the first one was an 8x8 grid, and this one's like 9x12 or something. I can't quite remember. It was a while ago. Um, and then I found out about a place called Fab Lab. So um, Manchester had a Fab Lab. It was the first one in the UK, inspired obviously by the ones in the first one that set up in by MIT in America. And it was a great community space um, where people could go, but it's very recently closed. Um, but this is just some of the projects that I kind of made around there. So this one actually wasn't made um, at Fab Lab. It was made at the Manchester Craft and Design Center. So basically, there's loads of local artists who work there. And they sometimes run workshops. So this was a pewter casting workshop. So I made a couple of different things. We were using cuttlefish. So you kind of engraved a pattern into a cuttlefish, and then you got to um, melt down um, pewter, which I think is a tin alloy, um, and you poured it in. So I made a couple of different things. You can use them as pendants for necklaces. I found a quite nice thing, which was um, when you poured it in, it kind of the metal sort of reacted a little bit with the pewter towards the top, so I could make um, a yellow Pac-Man. Um, or if you didn't want the yellow, then you could kind of scratch it off, and it was nice and shiny, so it was all yellow. Um, and at Fab Lab, I had my first experience with laser cutters. So um, I really love laser cutters. They're really fun. Um, so I kind of experimented with making loads of different designs. So this was um, working with paper. So you basically just make the laser go really, really fast so things don't set on fire, although that doesn't always work. Uh, I have set a couple of things on fire. Not too big fires, just like ditty fires. It's fine. Um, uh, also, this uh, so I experimented with some acrylic. So I heard that if you get wax crayons, then you can kind of grate the wax. If you do an engraving, then you can kind of grate the wax onto the acrylic, and then you put it in the microwave, and the wax kind of melts, and then you wipe off the rest, and you get quite a nice um, effect. So I used the periodic table to make my name because. I, I, I was like, this works, this is really good. And then I tried to make other people's names and it's really, really difficult. And I was like, at least my name works. <laughs> um, I made some LED cards. So um, what you can do is using conductive thread and just poking some holes in some card, then you can create nice, um, nice little gifts for people or cards. So I did a TARDIS and I did a Harry Potter wand and I put Lumos next to the switch so it's like we're casting a spell. Um, things like that. Uh, I laser cut a little um, Pac-Man pendant. So it's uh, one of the Pac-Man ghosts. And um, I was trying to, so there's just an RGB and LED in there. So it color cycles and just experimenting with diffusing the light um, and working um, on kind of building a nice little case using different layers of laser cut wood. Made some binary confetti because who doesn't need binary <laughs> confetti in their lives? <laughs> As you can see, I, I use this laser cutter for really useful things. Um, and I also converted uh, one of my drawings into uh, like a wooden thing, which is on the wall, and it casts pretty shadows. Um, so at Fab Lab, I kind of found a community of people like me, people who were really excited about learning about how things work and how they could make things for themselves. So um, they've got a CNC machine, or they had a CNC machine, a laser cutter. At one point, they had two laser cutters, which was really good because there was one with like a rotary bit. So as the laser moved, it also kind of rotated something. So you could put glasses in, and you could laser etch glasses um, and things like that. I, I wanted to put a rolling pin in so that you could like roll cookie cutters but I never got a chance to. Um, but yeah, it was just a community of like-minded people, people who would be happy to tell you how the laser cutter worked or how the 3D printer worked or to work with you on projects and actually get to use like massive machinery. So there's like a picture of Tiny Me next to the massive CNC machine getting to make like really big wooden kind of projects. And um, it was a great contrast to school. So in school, 
kind of like, this is maths, and this is biology, and this is art, and they didn't kind of really mix, whereas at Fab Lab, like, it didn't really matter. It was just like what you wanted to learn about, what you wanted to learn how to make, and you could just, you could make a dinosaur hoodie, or you could make something pretty to go on the wall, or you could make a case for your kind of project. Like, it didn't matter what it was, there was just people there to help you, and people there to kind of show you what to do. So, yay. Um, Uh, and then GCSE has kind of got in the way a little bit and I didn't really do many makeup re projects apart from um, at the end of year 11 at my school because obviously some people are going to move away and you're not going to see them again. We had a prom, um, so I, the theme was a starry night and I don't know if the video will s replay. There we go. Um, the theme was a starry night, so I got a navy blue dress, and my mum helped me to sew lots and lots of neopixels, and my grandma helped me to sew, because I was busy revising for my GCSEs, um, so lots and lots of neopixels into the dress so that I could have um, a starry night themed dress for my prom. Um, but unfortunately, we were advised that, because um, conductive thread is quite resistive, and I had about, I think it was 48, 48, um, near pixels sewn on. Um, we were advised not to use conductive thread for the positive and negative rails because they're highly resistive and I didn't want to be on fire, like that wasn't the theme. Um, <laughs> so we used solder joints, um, so we soldered them, but solder joints were quite brittle, so unfortunately five minutes into the prom, just me walking had broken all the solder joints, so <laughs> we had to kind of fix that, but it wasn't very feasible for wearing, so whilst it looked pretty, whilst I was standing still, I couldn't do anything useful, like actually walk somewhere, let alone dance in it or anything. Um, so that was kind of the first big wearable tech project that I did, and like obviously we learned a lot like maybe 48 isn't the best place to start maybe reduce it down to nine um <laughs> that might be easier to handle hmm? is it turned off again oops uh, there we go. am i on right cool <laughs> um and whilst i was kind of like after gcse's and i was doing a levels because that's kind of like the general step. The BBC kind of sent me an email and they were like, hey, you seem to do lots of makery stuff and we, we've got this project called the BBC Microbit. Um, so, have all of you heard of the BBC Microbit? Yeah, okay. So, they were like, we want some projects, we're doing a live lesson. So, basically, they have this online format where they'll create a lesson and they'll broadcast it. It's about 45 minutes long and on the day they'll broadcast it to school children. So they'll be sat on their lessons and they'll watch this 45 minute program which is broadcast live via the BBC Live Lesson website. And they were like, we'd like you to um, come on and we'd like you to talk about some stuff. And I sat down and I kind of listened to the format that they were talking about and I wasn't too happy with it because it sounded kind of like they were just trying to force coding onto everybody. And whilst I really enjoy programming, and most people in here probably really enjoy programming, I knew it wouldn't be for everybody, but I still think it's a really useful tool for people to learn. And I didn't want to put people off for life, um, and I wanted to kind of have these year sevens get excited about their micro bit and not just be like, oh, that's a bit boring and shove it in a drawer somewhere because if they're putting a million of these out there, or so they say, um, you don't want them to be wasted, you kind of want them to be used. So I thought about maybe ways of instead of being like, this is for coding, just go and code on it, we can think about how making it useful for them. So I came up with um, some ideas about hacking your bedroom, so to try and make projects that they'd want to make, and then in order to facilitate those, pro uh, those projects, they'd learn how to code kind of in the background. So one of them was like a constellation thing to go on the wall. Um, I made a little prototype and then the BBC props department made massive ones for me. Um, but I had to do all the soldering. So, <laughs> um, so this one, it was just some LEDs um, that kind of twinkled. There was, because they've got three main pins on the micro bit that you can attach circuits to or solder to, there was just three um, circuits, so you could control the different groups and they'd come on and just having it fade in and out. So it kind of, it would teach them about soldering, they could make it really arty if they wanted to, they could do whatever pattern they wanted on the canvas, and the nice thing was about it was, um, I went to Hobbycraft and I just got some box canvases, and if they're quite deep, then you can put it on the wall and you can house all the electronics inside the canvas. 
So you can, it can look quite pretty from the front and you don't have to see all the electronics, but if you turn it around then you can see all the electronics that are housed inside, you can show all your mates all the soldering that you did and like it's all nicely contained so it can fit flush on the wall without having to like, I don't know, drill a hole in the wall for the electronics to be housed in. And the second project that I made for them was a piano. So this uses conductive paint. Um, there's some wire kind of sewn through, I think it's here, here, and here, and here, so that um, I can attach it to the micro bit. And when you ground yourself using the circle and then press the different keys, then you can play a little song. So this is the big version. I don't know, can you hear that? It's Twinkle Twinkle, I think. Um, but you could basically play the piano, but on the micro bit, um, basically it's, I think it's touch resistive, so they got massive um, resistors, I think I used 22 mega ohm resistors, not 22 mega ohm, but 22 mega, yeah, um, <laughs> so um, there's three of those connected to the main three pins on the micro bit, but they have more pins which are smaller, so you use a breakout board to use them but their code um, or their kind of programming interfaces, they weren't expecting you to um, be able to do the touch stuff um, on the, uh, those other pins. So I had to ask my friend who had access to a private repository on GitHub for the DAL code, I think it was, if we could look through that and change it so that for this project because we added more pull-up resistors to the other pins because if you just got three notes you can't really make a good tune so we added it so that you could have seven notes um yeah uh, seven notes <laughs> um and so we kind of adapted that so that you could play more tunes so there was lots of soldering and not much homework getting done but projects getting <laughs> done <laughs> which was um, good i'm not sure school was happy about it but mm. Um, so those were the some of the projects that I did for the BBC. Um, I also did another live lesson for them, but I didn't get to make any projects for that one because it was literally, I think, um, in the middle of my AS exams. So it was rehearsal for the live lesson, doing the live lesson, and then it was a statistics exam, and then a physics exam, and a chemistry exam. So I just kind of um, explained the code rather than actually creating the code because I was trying to revise and get good grades at the same time, which is a hard balance to try and get right. Um, and then the dinosaur hoodie, this is my favorite project. Um, my, I was, huh? It's gone up again. I'm not sure, I think it's the battery. It doesn't, I think, because it doesn't require a lot of power and it's usually used for charging phones. It's just kind of like, nothing's plugged in, I'm going to turn myself off to conserve energy and then the rainbow disappears. Oh well, um, back to the story of the dinosaur. <laughs> um, I was in my friend's flat and he was talking with a friend and she was going to a festival and they were making costumes and she was like, I'm going to be a dinosaur and like, then all of a sudden I was just like, yes, a dinosaur hoodie, that sounds great. And the way that she did it was I think she just kind of stapled phone spines in, but I'd already imagined this, so I was like, I'm going to make this. It took me a year to make it because, you know, A-levels and things, but the first step that I did was I went into SketchUp and I tried to design uh, a spine. And um, SketchUp probably isn't the best piece of software for me to be using, but it's free and I know how to use it. So um, with the help, uh, initially I kind of just used the follow me tool and it was like a straight up comb, but that looked a little bit weird. Um, and also I figured if I was going to wear it at things like Maker Fair, I didn't want a small child colliding with my back and impaling themselves. <laughs> so um, I thought it'd be better if it was kind of hooked around. So I found a plugin, so SketchUp has People can write Ruby plugins, I think, so that it can expand the functionality of SketchUp. So I found one that kind of drew increasingly smaller circles along a curve that you could put in. So I just drew a curve and it created that um, the nice shape that I wanted. Um, and then I put some sewing holes in because I didn't want to glue it on. I thought it would be nice to sew it on. So I printed one out and then I used a phone torch to check that actually you'd be able to see light through this because it's all well and good having rainbow LEDs but if you can't see them then what's the point so it nicely diffused the light which was good and then I did a little bit of testing with an RGB LED to see what it would look like in the dark 
and then I was happy that it was all working, so I printed out a lot more. And they stack quite nicely too, which is handy. And I also made a space for invaders um, as Pac-Man ghost necklace, because why not? Um, and so between actually designing the spine and getting all the spines printed, I think I did it on an LT maker, so it was about half an hour for each spine. So it took a couple of weeks to um, have enough time on the 3D printer, because I don't actually own one, so it was all done at Fab Lab. Um, but eventually I had enough, and then I think school got in the way, and then, then Maker Fair was suddenly around the corner. And I was like, I need to have this done for Maker Fair, because it would be an awesome place to wear a dinosaur hoodie. Um, has everyone been to a Maker Fair? Does everyone know what a Maker Fair is? So kind of, so, right, so a Maker Fair is basically a celebration of all the things that you've made. So there's many Maker Fairs. Um, I've been to the Master One quite a few times. That's hosted in the Science Museum. It's now called Make Fest. But yeah, um, it's basically a collection of makers demonstrating what they've done. So they kind of showcase awesome things like Space Team by Bob over here. So if, has anyone played the app Space Team? Uh, yeah, so Bob and York Hackspace thought that was really, really cool. So decided to implement like a physical version of it. And it's crazy and it's really good fun. And it tours the country at these make, fa make fairs and it's really good. Um, so there's all kinds of crazy projects like this and at the UK Maker Fair it's like massive and it's up in Newcastle and there's things like massive fire breathing dragon sculptures and um, all kinds of crazy projects like this and it's just it's really good fun you should visit one. Um, and I was like this is the perfect place to wear a dinosaur hoodie because I couldn't wear it to school and you probably shouldn't wear it right down the high street but you know Maker Fairs it kind of seems like a good place to wear one. So this is me sat in the Premier Inn hotel room, frantically sewing um, the spines to the hoodie. Um, I'd managed to get all the LEDs sewn into place. So at the bottom here, there's a flora. So that's an Adafruit product. And it's basically an Arduino that is designed to be sewn onto things. And then these are sewable NeoPixels. So it's a WS2812 with basically, um, I think it's copper pads that you can just sew onto. So it's just in a format that makes it easy to connect to with conductive thread. So there's two kinds of conductive thread that you can get. One that's got stainless steel in it, which is kind of harder to sew with, but won't oxidize. Or there's silver thread, which has got strands of silver in. And it behaves more like normal thread, so it's easy for beginners to use. But it'll oxidize after about a year or so. So um, your projects won't last forever. Um, I used a mixture on this one, depending on how good at sewing I was feeling. <laughs> Um, so you can see kind of where the strands go up and then I was just sewing the spines over the top. And then I tested it and I got really happy that it was all working um, and finished it off and then I wore it around Maker Fair and around Newcastle and um, Newcastle, you know, notorious for stag parties and hendies. So there was quite a lot of drunk, confused people at a small dinosaur walking around at 11 p.m drinking milk on, <laughs> on the high street dressed as a dinosaur. So they got some quite funny comments. Um, yeah, and then I also, I wore it to a Robot Wars Live thing at Manchester because that's another appropriate place to wear it, I felt. Um, then I wore it to a laser rave at EMF. That was good fun. Um, lasers, they're good. Um, and then, because we were also at EMF, my friend, um, he likes to do photography, and he was like, what I really want to do is I want to do some light exposure photographs. And um, this was 2 a.m., so we decided to go up onto a hill in front of um, this basically massive camp full of nerds and geeks and hackers and makers. Um, it's basically like a music festival, but not a music festival because instead there's blacksmithing tents and there's silversmithing tents and there's a tent where you can learn about lock picking and things like that. So it's basically like kind of more, more of a festival for us people. Um, so this is where the laser rave was. Um, and we made some pretty light exposure photographs. So this was made by me jumping around. And then there was also one with me doing cartwheels. And the reason why this is kind of flickery is because doing cartwheels on a dark hill at 2 a.m. when you're tired makes you quite dizzy. And then you fall over and then you forget that you've got all the electronics on your back. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little bit temperamental now. But it made pretty photos, so it's all OK. <laughs> um, so that's the dinosaur hoodie. 
I'm currently making another one and trying to write up how I made it. So, because people at all these events were like, where can I buy one? And I was like, you can't buy one because I made it. But I'll put some instructions up on the internet. So, I'm trying to do that whilst also doing homework and lots of other things. Hmm? Um, this was another project that I did. This one was actually during school time. So, um, what for GCSEs, um, we didn't have that many options at my school because they wanted us to do nine nine GCSEs so that we were more likely to do well in each of those nine subjects instead of doing less well in, say, like 10 or 13 um, subjects. But the one kind of creative choice that I, I did was uh, product design. And instead of making jewelry or furniture like other people, I was like, I'm going to make a child's toy. But what I really want to do is experiment with loads of different kinds of materials. So um, I created a toy that was kind of aim to introduce people to um, young children to electronics by linking it to things they already knew about. So there's an LED which is a house um, because like when it's dark all the houses tend to light up so that's something that they kind of already know about. Roads connect things so they're kind of like the wires. They don't actually do much apart from look pretty. And then like a factory or a power station which house the battery. And using magnets when it snapped together it would light up. Um, so I made this um, during school time, mostly. Um, so this bit's laser cut, this bit was CNC'd. These were hand cut. And then these kind of resin tops, what I had to do was I used a belt sander and some MDF to form the roof shape. And then I used a vacuum former to create a mold. And then I resin cast it in, but then trying to suspend the LEDs in is quite hard. So I like, used some blue tack and some wire to create like a little arch over each of um, the molds and then use some solid tape to sandwich the legs of the LED so it was exactly the right position and then masking taped it to a desk which said please nobody touch this for 24 hours because I need this to set like this um, and then it worked so I had some roof shaped LEDs and drilled some holes into the house and um, managed to create um, this and the nice thing about using the magnets was I found them in some kind of school's magazine. I think it was called Mindset. So they were magnets that were conductive and they had a wire attached to them. So this made it quite easy to um, attach um, what I was doing with them. So what I did was I made, I called it conductive rope in my write-up of it, but it was basically strands of conductive thread mixed with normal yarn to kind of make it stronger. And you twist it and twist it and twist it, and then you fold it in half and it kind of twists itself into a nice little rope. So um, I hooked one end of this onto, the, onto um, the magnet and the other end onto the LEDs and things and onto the battery that's inside the factory and um, created like this kind of simple way that they could connect things in the circuit. Um, and the magnets were polarized, so this meant that I could make sure that they couldn't put the house in the wrong way around so they wouldn't get confused about the LED not working when it should work. Um, so it kind of ingrained the knowledge on a lower level that there's only one way you can put an LED in without actually having to tell them that, um, which was quite nice. Um, obviously, there's kind of issues where they could create short circuits and I need to kind of edit it and work on it. But it was quite a fun project to make and I made some packaging as well. I called it Electricity because it was like a city and stuff. That pun was come up with at like 4 a.m. in the morning because I was trying to get it all finished and me and my mum pulled an all-nighter trying to get the folder work completely done. Um, so that was another project that I did. Um, so yeah, does anybody have any questions about what I do or anything? Nope? Okay. Oh, yeah, hello. Yeah, so I've just sat my AS levels. They went well. Um, I'm doing A twos. I, I showed my face at school today, but I only had three periods this afternoon, so I was like, I'll come here. Um, I needed to come here because I was talking now, but I probably could have got here from after school. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing um, maths, further maths and physics at A2. I've dropped chemistry because it was far too stressful. <laughs> um, and uh, so I'm currently trying to do an EPQ, which is an extended project qualification. And in that, what I'm trying to do is look at the reasons why people took STEM and why people dropped STEM at different levels, um, and then create 
um, something that will help to encourage more people into it. So either by creating a little kit, because I've always wanted to learn how to use um, Eagle or some other PCB design software to actually create my own PCBs, because that seems quite fun. Um, or by making a little book. I've had a little idea for a book that I want to make um, that inspires people to get creative with technology through kind of like projects on each page. Um, so I might do that for it or um, create some kind of other kit. Um, but I'm not sure yet because I want to do a little bit of research first to see if I can find out what would be most effective. So if anybody wants any help with that, that would be good. Um, hopefully try and find a way that we can help save Manchester Fab Lab. Um, unfortunately, um, the Manufacturing Institute can't fund it anymore, I think is basically it. So they've handed in the notice for the rent and um, they're temporarily moving to Altrincham Fab Lab, which has funding from the local council, but it's a different council to Manchester, so um, hopefully they can find some more funding, but if not, it was a great community space where I learnt a lot and um, I don't know, it's a bit sad. <laughs> um, what else am I going to do? I need to decide what I want to do at university. I need to apply to university and then hopefully go to university. That's something I should be doing. Otherwise, school is going to go a bit crazy at me for not writing a personal statement. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that I'll be doing. Yeah. Huh? Is it gone? What's going to happen with the hoodie? Okay. Um, so if any of you are familiar with the Raspberry Pi, you've probably seen the Pi Bear case, which is made by Pi Maroney. So I'm hoping to create a dinosaur hoodie kit with them so to kind of introduce people to um, soft electronics so, or wearable technology or e-textiles, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it's a really interesting field which helps people who wouldn't necessarily get into electronics get into it. So the, you've got some people who are electronics, who are really into electronics who'll learn how to sew, or some people who are really good at sewing who'll learn a bit more about electronics. So it's just kind of fun um, intersection between subjects. And yeah, so I need to, is it going to come back on? Because I had a thank you thing. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to make a kit. And then you can all walk around in dinosaur hoodies because it's really useful. Now it's at the beginning. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, I've been Minnie Girl Geek, if you want to follow me on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>